Hey everyone, I'm Greg with Vital MTB, and this is the Kona Hay. No, it's not the bike that I was riding when I broke myself, but it is the bike we are talking about today. <laughs> the Kona Hay has evolved over the years from a titanium hardtail to the current model sporting 120 millimeters of travel front and rear. The previous models were geared exclusively toward XC racing, while this latest model is less clear. On the website, the opening banner describing the Hey Hey includes descriptors such as XC meets Trail Slayer, as well as we think it's more like fun country. Now, once clicked on the specific model, the bike is described a bit differently. Quote, the Hey Hey CRDL is a bike that wins big. It's bagged three 24-hour solo world championships under Corey Wallace. It's won huge stage races and it's bagged world records. Obviously, this observation is splitting hairs, but it is the reason why, at first, this bike left me scratching my head. Hey Vital MT beers, just last week Kona launched the 2021 version of the Hey Hey CRDL, after we shot and recorded this long-term bike test. Aside from paint color, the frame remains the same, but there are a few important component changes on the 2021 model that would have impacted our overall impression. Those differences and how they would affect performance are highlighted later in the video. The geometry wasn't quite as slack or trail-like as some of the current downcountry bikes. It also had an interesting speck of descent-oriented components, such as the pike, G2 brakes, and 175 millimeter dropper. But the two and a quarter recon tires confirmed that this was designed with climbing in mind. Those slim tires are a pretty big point for the bikes within this classification. As we know, tires are one of the most important components to consider on a bike. They can also be used as a way to determine how hard a bike wants to push. A bike with slacker geometry would have overwhelmed rubber this size, but this bike was happy to plug along with those tires through the backcountry as well as my local trails here in Idaho. I never really wanted a beefier rubber. The instant acceleration and low unsprung weight made for an intoxicating experience. In fact, I would have happily put a lower profile tire in the rear for most of the local riding here in Boise, Idaho. I only threw on beefier rubber when riding steeper tracks at a local bike park. Those tires, DHR2 front and rear, were fun on the steep descents, but climbing to the top of the mountain was far less exciting. It neutered the bike in a way. After the first few weeks of the test, the bike made a whole lot more sense. It's an XC bike, done Kona's way. It doesn't neatly fit into any one category. But once you embrace that, it's amazing. Now, let's talk about some of the characteristics of the bike. In the front, we see a Pike Ultimate RCT3. The most recent model of the Hey Hey has swapped the Pike for the SID with its recently updated structure that has added stiffness for modern XC courses. Regardless, there's nothing strange to note. The Pike is a well loved for a reason. It's supple, doesn't dive, and has plenty of stiffness to aid precise steering. The rear suspension is where things get interesting. Our suspension analysis illuminated some interesting characteristics. First, the suspension is very progressive for a bike of this category. In fact, at 30% progressivity, the value is rarely seen on 120 millimeter bikes. Throughout the test, I found that progression to be welcome. The small chatter was smoothed considerably better than I would have expected, and I never felt any harsh bottom outs. The feeling was stable and predictable for the vast majority of conditions that I put it through. The anti-rise is close to 100% at sag, so the geometry is unaffected while braking. More specifically, the rear end neither lifts nor compresses under braking. The controlled nature of the suspension, along with the ample braking power, I'll get to that later, led to a huge boost in precision and confidence. Confidence was had as long as it was within the bike's boundaries. There was a distinct line where I knew the bike would not tread if I pushed too hard. I also never felt like it had more than 120 millimeters out back. Interestingly, the frame has 185 by 45 millimeter shock, which would suggest that it actually has 115 mils of travel. I would assume that Kona believes the flex in the rear end makes up the additional travel. Either way, I felt like I had plenty of suspension in relation to the front end. Also, despite smoothing the trail admirably, the response was not obviously plush. 
It absorbed a considerable amount of trail chatter, but the most exciting aspect was the responsiveness. The hey hey doesn't get hung up on successive hits like I would have expected. It seemingly propelled itself through washboard and when given the opportunity, it would react quickly and jump over anything in the way. That quick, responsive nature was further aided by the low, unsprung weight provided by the low profile tires. It was a great combination and on mellow trails, incredibly fast. The trail feel was exactly what I would have wanted in a bike like this. Any boundary felt on the descents was thrown out the window when it came to a climb. The bike is an absolute savage. At first, I wasn't sure about its climbing chops. I would have preferred a bike that was a couple pounds lighter, especially at my weight. But at 100% anti-squat and the aggressive seating position, I never felt like I was being robbed of energy. I didn't have any interest or need in flipping the climb switch, though the climb switch's front and rear would be welcome during the race. The flex stays are a highlight of the frame's design. They offer reduced complexity as well as a lower weight, but this frame stance was fairly wide. The stance was wide enough that I had a noticeable amount of heel rub on both chainstay and seat stay. I would highly recommend taking a spin on this bike prior to purchasing to make sure that it isn't going to be a significant issue. Personally, I noticed it a few times, but not enough to be particularly bothersome. The bike clawed its way up steep moto trails without any issue. Its responsive nature and excellent traction on the descents was a transferable and massively desirable trait for technical climbs. I could easily pick lines and just power up without much thought. It was intuitive and made climbing both fun and fast. The bike was efficient enough that I was happy to ride for hours. Fortunately, there are plenty of mounts on the frame for water bottles, as well as my strap for tools. There's actually so much room in the front triangle that it would work exceptionally well for a bikepacking rig. The reliable components made that thought even more appealing. The G2 brakes were at first an odd choice for an XC bike, but one that made a great deal of sense after some thought. The incredible power and modulation that the G2 brakes offered allowed the Heihei to perform well in a massive range of terrain. I cannot tell you just how much I appreciated the ability to pick and choose when to brake, as opposed to just laying down a death grip and hoping to slow down. That brief, specific braking also freed up the suspension to work effectively and gave the tires the opportunity to grip through tricky sections of trail. The brakes were satisfyingly powerful without excessive weight. The addition of these brakes ended up being a no-brainer in my mind, a true standout. Second is the dropper post. A reverb with 175 millimeters of drop was a welcome addition to the bike. Sadly, by the end of the test, there was about a centimeter of vertical travel at the top of the stroke. Fortunately, the new reverbs have a vent valve at the top of the post to alleviate that problem. The wheels survived the test, and I found the width and compliance satisfactory. The hub, on the other hand, is a DT Swiss 370 that lacks sufficient engagement. Sadly, as a Paul design, there isn't the ability to upgrade to one with more. It's like Kona read our minds. The 2021 Hey Hey comes with a DT Swiss 350 rear hub. Not a Paul design, the 350 is upgradable with DT's 54 tooth star ratchet. That means a quick engaging hub is just about a hundred bucks away, leaving our biggest complaint about the hey hey to die in the dirt. Cable routing is another point that must be discussed. First, there was significant cable rattle in the down tube on this bike. Fortunately, a competent bike shop would be able to alleviate that by sliding foam around the housing. Still, somewhat annoying that it didn't come that way to begin with. Second was the routing itself. I did not notice any ghost shifts throughout the test, but there does seem to be fairly sharp angles as the housing has to S its way from the BB to the seat stay. The rubber grommet on the seat stay insertion point failed to stay in place. The odd routing, as well as the fact that the BB is also press fit, could potentially result in a trickier installation of housing down the road. So that about sums up my experiences and thoughts on the bike which leads me to the question of who should consider this bike. 
Anyone interested in covering ground quickly without having to sacrifice a great deal on the descents would be stoked. Hit up vitalmtb.com for full specs, geo charts, and more. Or visit konaworld.com for their 2021 lineup.